WISC-TV now presents For the Record. It's the 40th anniversary of the Madison Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta, and it's time for the 2017 Freedom Fund reception, and you will learn about both next on For the Record. Thanks for joining me. I'm Neil Heinen. The Freedom Fund reception and dinner is the fundraising event of the year for the Dane County NAACP, and we'll preview that event a little later in the show. But we begin with an anniversary celebration for the Madison Chapter of one of the world's most prominent sororities, Delta Sigma Theta, and I welcome to For the Record, MAC President Terry Strong and 40th Anniversary Committee Chair and State Coordinator Carla Gaines. Welcome, both of you. Thank you. Thank I, you. I suspect some people were, were uh, at least taken by my use of the wor word world, but indeed, uh, uh, Delta Sigma Theta is a... Uh, is a global organization, right? It's indeed a global organization. Talk a little bit about its uh, its history and its mission, Terry. If you well, would. Um, we are the largest. So I'm glad that you said that we are the largest African American women's organization in the world. Mm -hmm. We have well over 200,000 members in our um, sorority both um, domestically and internationally. I think I kind of like 13 foreign countries, maybe something like you, that. You, you probably are right. Yeah, um, uh, there's uh, Korea, um, Japan, yeah. Okinawa, um, Germany, Bahamas, England. Yep. Yep, yep, yep. Yep. So you, you've done your research, <laughs> absolutely. Um, it started in 1913, 13, right? January 13th, right. 1913. And what, what kind of spurred the creation of it? Well, what spurred the creation for Delta Sigma Theta is a need for change, a new way to look at how we manage and handle adversity. Um, they stepped out, the founders, there were 22 founders of our great sorority who stepped out on faith to make a change, to um, give voice to the voiceless. Um, and they marched in a march, they marched in the Women's Suffrage March, and that was our first act of public service. And it has taken off from then. You know, I don't, I don't know how many people realize this, but um, sororities, and they're, they're more than just uh, uh, Delta Sigma Theta, um, have a pretty prominent role in the African American community. Yes. Why, why is that, Carla? Can you speak to that? Yes, well, um, we, prefer, we, we, we prefer to like the divine nine, and so... Um, and that's there, that's the nine yes, sororities? There, there's okay. nine soror sororities and fraternities, okay. and so they make up the divine nine. And so it is a lifetime commitment for all of those African American organizations, many of them founded on historically black campuses uh, years ago. Uh, we happen to be 104 years old. Uh, but it is to empower uh, our African American communities and to uh, give many different programs in regards to education, physical and mental health, economic development. And so we all have some of those stems that we try to strive for to reach our communities, to build them, and so that we can begin to empower, continue to empower uh, each other. So it's a lifetime commitment. It's yeah. not just in college. Yeah. It's a lifetime commitment. And I was, I was struck um, at, uh, at a welcome breakfast for Dr. Jack Daniels several years ago mm -hmm. um, at the Madison Club on a bitterly cold January day, as yes. I recall. But different groups got up to yes. welcome Dr. Sure, Daniels. Yes. Yep. And the sororities and the fraternities yes. were a really important part of, 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 of the description of the community for yes. Dr. Daniels. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And in Madison, we have a very uh, unique, I would say, bond with all of those Divine Nine. Though we're different organizations, we in Madison, we have that, that bond of uh, sister and brotherly love so that we can get the work done together. Absolutely. We have different... Uh, entities that we do do things separately, but together we know that we can really make a difference in our communities and be a powerful voice. Yeah. So 40 years ago, Madison decided it needed a chapter. 40 years ago, Madison decided it needed a chapter, yeah. and those 23 charter members put their heads together to figure out how they were going to uplift this community, how they were going to uplift the African-American citizens of Madison and Dane County to bring programming here, to offer activities and events, 
to help with the political climate, if you will, that they were dealing with then. In and 1977. 1977, yep. that yep. we're still dealing with some of the things now. I was reading the charter, and it talked about needing to um, be a voice for our children in the school district. Yep. It talked about um, racism. It talked about high incarceration um, rates. It also talked about the fact that um, uh, reading scores and test scores were low for African American children. So, I mean, some of those um, issues are still, mm -hmm. they still remain to this day. And so that's what they wanted to do. They wanted to, um, they wanted to give rise to the issues that we were dealing with. And a great way to do that is to become, to become a, um, a charter, be, become a Part of the national? Part, no, oh, okay. to, to have their own identity, uh, identity I, I gotcha. here yep. and create the Madison Alumni Chapter. Yep, yep, yep. Well, yep. let's when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about the work of the Madison Alumni okay. Chapter, and we'll talk about the event uh, coming up right okay. after this. It's the 40th anniversary of the Madison Alumni Chapter of Delta Sigma Theta, a global sorority of uh, women, primarily uh, African-American women from historically black colleges that is much, much older than the Madison Chapter, uh, but a, an important anniversary to celebrate nevertheless. So before the break, we were talking about the mission, and it sounds like the Madison Chapter embraces the five primary uh, missions of, 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 the, of the sorority, but then can apply it to local um, to, to local issues mm -hmm. and local Absolutely. concerns. What's the, what, what, what are some things that the chapter is engaged in that the public might recognize? So we are really, really engaged in the um, political action scene, yeah. social action. Um, we have hosted a number of candidates forums, oh, um, right. one for um, the alderman, uh, specific aldermanic districts, yep. and we also did one for the school, school board. Yeah. And we um, collaboratively came together with um, other organizations, the 100 Black Men and the Urban League, mm -hmm. to host those events. Yep. And those were very important, um, critical, People really needed to be in make informed decisions. And raise awareness of these Ra issues. Raise awareness yeah. and to be able to make an informed vote yeah. when they um, went to the polls. So talk about the party, Carla. I, here I was all prepared to, to sell tickets. No. And it's sold out. We are sold out. We are so excited. Yeah. Our theme is service and partnership with a purpose. And we have been uh, planning this for almost two years uh, uh, for this event uh, because we are so excited. We have found um, of the 23 charter members, we have 10 coming to our event oh, great. Uh, as our special yeah. guest. That is so amazing, amazing. and we're so ex excited about that. And so we have um, several different events that will happen um, this weekend. We have several partners that we are so thankful um, that they were able to partner and sponsor, help sponsor this event, because without them, we wouldn't be able to do it again. Right. This is why it is a partnership and a collaboration um, with so many different organizations because we don't live on an island. Again, we are partnering with so many to make a difference. Um, my president mentioned earlier regarding some of our uh, events and regarding what we do, our signature events. Another one is our Heart and Soul event that yes. we do for our scholarship mm -hmm. ball that's in February. And we also partner with the Madison College in Edgewood in doing our HBCU college fair. You know, many of our young people can't go on those tours to uh, historically black colleges down south. So we brought them to uh, Madison. Um, and so that has been really huge. And so with all of that, we want to celebrate all of the great work for the past 40 years that uh, our chapter has been involved in and we have received awards in regards to our work in those different entities that you talked about in education and public serve in public um, service and in political awareness and involvement and so on this next coming weekend we are going to celebrate 
uh, with 150 people. Uh, it is open to the community, but it is sold out. Yep. Our guest speaker, uh, our keynote is our 24th national president, Dr. Cynthia Marie Antoinette Butler McIntyre, and she is a dynamite speaker. Where is she from? She is from Louisiana. Okay. And we are so excited that she uh, is coming here. She was our centennial president, so she led many of our 100th celebration anniversaries uh, with power. Uh, and we, as she says, we are a movement and not a monument. Yes. So we are excited. On Friday, we're going to gather. All of the Deltas are going to gather at the Sheraton Hotel for a reception. And then Saturday, we're going to be involved in a rededication of who we are and why we are and what we do, what we do. And then have a celebration luncheon and do some public service also. So mm -hmm. we're going to do some... Um, uh, service in regards because public service is who we are so we're going to be doing some partnerships with the East Madison Community Center Great. and doing some things with them so that we can serve that neighborhood and we're going to do that and have dinner and then on Sunday we're going to end with ecumenical service uh, to lead us on home so we are looking forward to an empowering event on this next coming weekend feels like a really nice recognition for the chapter that the president the national president is coming here to, yes. Yes. To yes 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 it's amazing you have a sense that the Madison chapter is pretty highly thought of um, in the organization we think so. We hope so. <laughs> we hope so. We, we work hard. So. You know, yeah. we think are so. a small, but we are a mighty yes. chapter. Yeah. And I think that over the last several years, mm -hmm. we have made our mark. We have. Um, regionally and also nationally. Yes. Anybody looking at a roster of members and board members in yes. particular would know that this is a powerhouse chapter. Mm -hmm. yes. um, congratulations. Well, thank on, you on so much. Years. Thank, you. thank you so much. There's another event coming up. It's the NAACP Annual Banquet, and we will talk about that right after this. The Dane County NAACP holds its 2017 Freedom Fund Reception and Dinner Friday, September 29th. And while we could likely say this every year, this year's event in this year's political climate is timely indeed. I welcome back to For the Record, the president of the Dane County branch of the NAACP, Greg Jones. Nice to see you again, Greg. Nice to see you, you too, Neil. Thanks. So, um, I mean, I read it, 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 it was uh, just four years ago that the that the Dane, Dane County branch was chartered again. Give yes. us just an update on the on the health of the of the chapter of the NAACP. Well, three things I would mention. Number one, our membership has grown, and I think that's a testament to a lot of people understanding the mission uh, and role of the NAACP at the local level. Number two, I think our state conference has gone. We've added two chapters uh, around the state of Wisconsin uh, in those four years. And then thirdly. I think for me, uh, the health of this committee, of the branch rather, is really demonstrated through the role of the individual committees. And those are what's taking off and I think doing quite well uh, in our local community. Um, talk about some of the work, particularly of the last year, Greg, where, where people would recognize the NAACP uh, in, involved in this community. Well, I think when you look at the NAACP, the range of issues that we've addressed in the area of civil rights and social uh, justice really fall in several different categories. But just to highlight a couple, uh, I want to speak to the upcoming education forum that we have planned. Yes. And it's going to be, I think, a powerful event. It will be the first time our branch has stepped out to really understand the depth of issues facing parents in terms of supporting their children in school and children in the learning environment in the school. Dynamic speakers, Dr. Gloria Latson billings uh, will be uh, the keynote speaker at the high school event at La Follette on the 26th of September, and Dr. Willie Larson, Larson, excuse me, on the 21st, and Dr. Larson will be at the middle school, right, middle school on the 21st. Those two individuals bring a wealth of background. Dr. Larson, former president of graduate of uh, Grambling University, and of course, our homegrown, homemade sister Billings will be quite, quite powerful. Nationally so, respected uh, educators. Big time. Both, yep, big time. And I think some of the other advocacy things that we don't talk a lot, but we hear from our committees is that we're really trying to develop a, a cogent response to the housing complaints we get. We get so many complaints from individuals about issues with landlords, tenant issues, regulations, state regulations that are affecting their living ability. We want to put together some type of response. So we're going to be working with uh, various uh, groups and organizations in the month of October to plan some type of response to that. That is a 
it could be a dehumanizing uh, situation, and we want to engage in that and do what we can to make sure that life in Dane County for all citizens is proper. Boy, that seems so so poignant right now, Greg, as we look back 50 years now oh, yeah. at, the, at the housing marches in Milwaukee in, in 1967, which, oh, yeah. I, which I remember well. 50 years later, we still are, are, are fighting for housing rights. Interesting you mentioned that in Milwaukee. Uh, in our monthly meetings, we have a reflection. This past month, we had a reflection on the life of Dick Gregory. Coincidentally, one of the, one of the members of our branch lived and traveled and worked with Dick Gregory in those marches back in the 60s. He brought the reflection. And it wasn't one written by a newspaper mm -hmm. or, or by, uh, you know, uh, anyone. He gave a heartfelt rendition of what that man's life was like and the impact he had on those uh, freedom schools in Milwaukee at that time. So, so I agree. I think uh, housing is always going to be a significant social justice and, in my opinion, a civil rights issue that must be address, addressed collaboratively. So we're going to do that. And then let me just mention, I think, uh, uh, one of the things, and I call it one of those steadfast kinds of issues. And by the way, our theme this year is steadfast and immovable. Steadfast, 108 years, immovable and rooted in the principles of civil rights and social justice. Uh, one of the things that happened recently was uh, the discourse regarding the naming of the city county building. Uh, and that reached the branch membership, and they just raised the concern that we really think that's a more, that's a more appropriate labeling. So that, I think, was one of the most engaging meetings of the branch to talk about what they truly felt and the legacy it would have on uh, Obama's uh, life uh, going forward. That's a, it's a good example. Give us maybe another, a, a, a little more perspective on the conversation within, within the, the chapter about events nationally and, and, and how the chapter can, can, can bring some thoughtfulness to bear on how this community looks at those events? Well, I think, first of all, we do want to recognize uh, our, our, our friends, families, and victims in Texas right now. We always want to recognize and support anybody going through hard times and difficult times. In Charlottesville, I think we recognize that we still live in a, in a period where narrative and uh, symbols really reveal and continue the divisiveness between whites and blacks. Uh, for us at the local branch level, we certainly support the national in all of the statements made in opposition to uh, the actions taken by the neo-Nazis and other hate groups. Uh, we stand, uh, and as you know, we got started as a branch following the lynchings that occurred, which were life-taking events done in the racial context. So we'll always stand on those, uh, just the, the narrative and the principles uh, of the organization. But for Charlotte, we think that that has unleashed a different level of obvious uh, 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 negative, hateful, and racist reactions uh, within our society. So we'll, we will work with, and like last week, Saturday, participating in marches that actually were planned in the local community, the Meadowood community, March for Peace and Justice and for our children. Those are the kinds of things that symbolically uh, bring people together wholesomely so that the definition and clarity of those issues facing us will, uh, will be brought to bear. So we'll always participate in those. Um, what we thought we would do at the branch level is we'll have an open mic session at every general membership meeting, which is the fourth Tuesday of each month, uh, for members to raise a voice express their desires, let it be known what their true feelings are. Because I think we want to be in a proactive position so that in our local community, at least in Dane County, we want to be one of the tools uh, and resources that bring to bear some positive responses. But also being mindful that the historical context has not been totally addressed and people have not healed from what some call the war between the states and others call the Civil War. We think that those monuments uh, statues, and don't forget there are yacht, yacht symbols and yacht decorations that exist that carry that same narrative. So we want to be able to address those and certainly commend and support all efforts to uh, eradicate them. Certainly the, the, the current political climate, Greg, just it, 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 it necessitates so much reactive sure. um, response, but is there anything that we can take out of this that would suggest some positive response? To, well, I, I think for me there are two things. One is that we still rely and believe in what's called fundamental truths. And the fundamental truths will require uh, stating, identifying, discussing, and accepting the truths that occurred around a time in our country when we were all divisive. 
when uh, certain power structures and supremacist groups really put in place what I think were the uh, systemic and structural, but also conducted the narrative that continued the long term. Uh, we have to accept that and we have to address it. And when we address it, we then have to recognize that it was false, it was misleading, and must be er eradicated. So I think, we, I think that that opportunity for that discussion uh, and response is now open, and I don't think it's going to close very soon. I think huh. there will be more situations requiring more participation. I think those are really good examples. I, I want to believe that this upcoming um, um, uh, Freedom Dinner and, and, and reception would be a place where maybe some people who haven't engaged with the NAACP might feel a desire to engage this year. Certainly. Talk talk about how people can participate and, and, and how people can get tickets to the event. Well, the tickets, if you go to our website, you certainly can get all the information about um, ticket sales Where and is it ad this sales. Year? Uh, it's at the concourse. Yep. Uh, 29th, 530 uh, is the reception. We found that that's a, uh, that seems to be in kind of an ease easygoing uh, activity where people can meet, gather, talk, uh, and then of course the program at 7 uh, at the concourse. But we've done some, uh, we've done a few things differently this year. and We're going to see how this measures to uh, reach the community and engage them. Um, we have an opportunity uh, this year for sponsors who might want to speak at the event. So mm -hmm. we're giving them the opportunity uh, through the ad solicitation uh, uh, to, uh, to speak. And secondly, we understand that um, if these organizations are going to survive, we have to reach young people. So we've tweaked our ticket structure so that uh, young, young adults uh, under the age of 25 uh, can purchase a ticket for $65, which would include an annual membership. And then for the younger group, uh, under 17, a $50 ticket, which will include their annual membership and the cost of the dinner. So we want to see if this helps us. We did hear from younger people saying, you know, the $100 regular fee is a little bit too much, sure. so I think uh, uh, given that, we want to see if we can't tweak and, that. And there's still opportunities for sponsorship? Oh, yes. Opportunities for sponsorship and ticket purchases. So our website uh, has all of the information. Certainly use it, utilize it, and uh, we'd like to see a full house that night. This is the biggest fundraising event of the year. It is the biggest and only. Uh, as a branch, we, we're only required to have one fundraiser and that we're all volunteers with no paid staff. We find that uh, if we do it right and do it once, we'll get it right. Greg Jones, thanks very much for coming on to talk good, about good, it. Good. All right, Neil. We're going to come back and wrap up for the record right after this. My th thanks to Greg Jones and also to Terry and Carla for joining us. And thank you for watching. We'll see you next week on For the Record.